We've had a Rover K series come in for a strip and overhaul. So this has already been modified. It's gas flowed, it's got some verniers on it. Looks like quite a nice little motor. So we're gonna strip this down and uh, see what we can find. And while I'm doing that, or while I'm doing this, this is a uh, Jeep, Willie's Jeep crank that's come in. The big ends are already at 20 thou and the mains were at 10 thou already, but I've had to grind the big ends to 40 because there was some quite bad marks in two of the journals which wouldn't clean up. So uh, this is the last one I've got to do on the big ends and then I'm on to the mains. So that's the Willys Jeep crank all done. And I must say it looks uh, a damn sight better than it did when it first come in. So I'm really uh, chuffed with the end on that. I've checked it all and it's all um, on just below top tolerance. And then they asked me if I'd just have a bit of a polish up on that face there. So um, I've cleaned it as best as I can. I don't think it's gonna get much better than that. I'm gonna whack it in the cleaner for a little bit now and then uh, spray some grease on it. So I've now got the cylinder head off the Lotus and I can see straight away that it's been burning a little bit of oil. Um, it's got modified pistons in it there. I'm eager by the looks of things. I'll know more when I get the carbon off it. I've started stripping the cylinder head. It's got upgraded spring retainers on it. It's got Piper cams in it upgraded springs and they look like upgraded valves as well but i've put them in the parts tray ready to wash first um to get the carbon off them but they've got traces of oil around them as well so the head's been ported quite a nice job with that as well there's a slight bit of guide wear in there but nothing major so i'm going to spin it around now and take the exhaust valves out Thought I'd just show a quick little tip for getting the valve stem oil seals off a K-series cylinder head. They're quite hard to pull or slide hammer off, but all you need to do is get a wide screwdriver and then just give it a... You just put it between the cylinder head casting and the valve stem oil seal. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. And then just give it a little twist and it pops it straight off. Do another one, like that. And it just takes seconds, then just get a little magnet and then remove them all. Which I can see if I can capture it better up here. That's it, all eight off already. So I'm back working on the K-Term uh, engine, the K-Series 1.6. Um, I thought I'd show what I've done because I am kind of skipping ahead a little bit. The engine was fully stripped. Well, I've balanced the conrods um, and also one of the pistons have had a bit of damage. So I've machined the damage out and then obviously done the same on every piston as well. And then these have all been through the ultrasonic. Um, what I'm doing now, we're putting brand new liners in it. So I'm just gapping the rings in the liners at the moment. And then I've machined off the pulley that's not, or the part of the pulley that's not used on the front pulley. Um, that's made that 1.5 kilo, it was 1.8 kilo. And what I'm doing now is we're getting ready to assemble it. So I've got the crankshaft on the balancer. I've put all the data into the computer on the balancer. Uh, I haven't ran this up yet, so that's why there's no figures in here. So I'm going to run it up and we'll see how much needs to come off it before we start putting the front pulley on it and the flywheel and things like that. So I've just got to slightly adjust the sensor at the moment. 
it's not picking up RPM. So it is now. So this will only read when we get to 800 RPM. So I'm just going to dial some speed out of it. I think what I'm going to do is just check the settings on the computer because this reads about right down here but these shouldn't be off the target so I reckon I might have just um, put some figures in wrong there so I'll just power it down and then just go into the computer press rotor yeah okay so I don't know if you can see this here but it it basically puts in all tolerance settings in here and on this line here it's all missing out of here so I must have missed something off there so um, let's put in basic setting okay that's better let's try again Ah, there we go. So that's better. The target's now bringing, um, bringing it right down. The, the setting's the same, but it's just showing us roughly where on the target it needs adjustment. So I'm going to print that screen so I can keep it in my customer's paperwork. And then I'm going to make two slight adjustments to bring the crankshaft in balance. So many uh, engines on the go. I've got pistons and conrods everywhere at the moment. Right, so I'm going to work on the flywheel side first, just because that's further out than the front pulley side. So I'm going to bring this side in first, and then as soon as this starts to come in, I'll bring them both down together. I'll make some adjustments and then show you what I've done. So I've made two adjustments to the K-series crankshaft assembly and this is, this is the flywheel side, this is the front pulley and they're both lit up green now so they're both bang on tolerance and then basically what I've had to do is just drill this original uh, drilling a little bit deeper and then there I've just ground a bit of that away there to make that the right size. So what I'm going to do now is bolt on the front pulley and the flywheel and then take some more readings. So I'm now balancing the flywheel and the front pulley and um, as an overall mass it's in balance but each end is out. So I'm going to just try and bring each end in um, to, to get it all to light up green but it ain't, it ain't really bad that and that's the flywheel and clutch bang on now sorry the flywheel and front pulleys bang on now so I'm going to bolt, bolt the clutch on and we'll see what that fix it makes on it So that's the clutch being balanced now. Uh, it was out, which I didn't show at the start, but I've got it right down to now one gram and three grams on the front, so I'm really happy with that. And I'll just show you where the flywheel, sorry, the clutch was out. them three holes there but that's brought it right in so I could take this off now polish the crank polish the crank journals get it through the cleaner and then this can start to be assembled so I'm working on the 1600k series K2M engine today 
and the next thing that I'm doing is fitting valve guides, exhaust valve guides. So I'm on my Carmec guide press for that. The first thing I've done is take a measurement from the top of the guide to the spring, pleat, uh, spring seat platform. So I know exactly the height that I need to do. So all the guides are out now. So what I'm going to do now is press the guides in from from the spring seat side downwards. These are the guides, they're quite small, uh, 6.2 mil sticks out above the spring seat platform. So what I need to do is find a, a spacer to fit down here to drop on, so basically I've got something to press against. So I've already got some that are machined up for different cylinder heads so I'll just check them first. That's the smallest one I've got. <clears throat> so what I'll quickly do is just turn up something that sits over that and I could just push onto it. So on the Caterham en engine I'm doing the cam timing next. So I found true TDC. I put the belt on roughly in the right position. I'm now going to drop the gauges onto the inlet and exhaust cam and we're going to set this um, we're going to set this engine up so we're at full lift. Um, so I've got to go and do a quick bit of research on the cams to find out where they need to be set to and then we'll get it done. So I've been upstairs and I've printed the camshaft data so I know exactly what my um, full lift degrees are. I'm going to start on the inlet cam. <coughs> I've undone the three vernier bolts and then nipped one back up. I've got my DTI on with a nice um, thin pointer and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll turn it over and see where we're at. Because this is the initial setup, I'm just going to uh, make sure everything is um, going to be in the right area. So we're roughly a tooth out on this. Um, this is showing about 95 degrees <clears throat> where I want on the inlet 100 and um, where are we? Okay, so 104 degrees. So yeah, I, I think I'm roughly a tooth out. So what I could do is capture it on the vernier. I could undo the vernier and move it round, but. What I what I think is it might take it where we're on the stops of the vernier, which isn't good. But I will just crank it off and bring this round because it might actually send it the right way. Yeah, because the vernier had already been set up, it wasn't exactly in the middle anyway. So what I'm going to do is. I've moved that to get me roughly where I want to be. So what I'm going to do now is turn the engine over again, check that my TDC is still in the right place. So we're coming up to TDC now.
So I'm just checking TDC again. Now the inlet valve is already starting to open. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the fact that my pointer is still touching the, uh, the cam follower okay. So what I've done is I've just, <clears throat> I've gone about this a bit more accurately now. Um, the first one, I, I wasn't trying too hard to get it absolutely bang on, I just wanted to know roughly where we were. This time I'm taking two readings to work out the dwell point of the camshaft. So I need my calculator just to make sure I'm pretty close. Yeah, so, I, so the, the manufacturer's recommendation for this case here is CAM, the inlet is, um, they want that set at 104 degrees. Well, I've just moved the vernier a little bit and we're still well within the middle and the first reading I've got is 105.5. So I'm really chuffed with that. If I just crack that off a little bit and then move that just one degree, on that vernier So the first thing I'm going to do is also check the TDC again. That's bang on. Just move slightly. There you go. So what I'm going to do is take a reading from a different point on the on the gauge. One more slight little tweak and then this one is set perfectly. So what I'm going to do is then just take three readings from it just so I know that I've got my average. So 
So I'll get on with that and then we'll move the gauges over to the exhaust side, check the exhaust side and then this engine's nearly complete. <clears throat> so that's the exhaust all set as well, but I thought I would just show you what I wanted to do. Uh, just because it's a little pet eight of mine when I see other engine builders do this. This cam timing is set perfect, which is a shame really because ideally or what i should do is just lock it up send it and forget about it it's absolutely the perfect setting however you can see these bolts they're right at the end of the travel virtually of the vernier there's probably if i unscrew this one out there's probably about four degrees of movement left before it hits the stops which there's nothing wrong with that i could just tighten it up send it out and then he has got four degrees my customer's got four degrees of movement if he ever wanted to move it on the rolling road but it just frustrates me because basically if i kick this over a tooth now it will more than likely put the allen key straight back in the middle of the vernier which means my customer then has got com virtually complete motion each way so he's probably got i don't know how many degrees but but 10 degrees of, of movement. Now, that's something that I just think spending the extra time to do stuff like this, if we've ever went to the rolling road and you know we wanted to tune it and we couldn't get enough into it, by setting this into the middle, it makes everyone's life easier. So that's just one of my tips really. It is more work for me, but I think it's gotta be right, it's gotta be done. So there we are. I've moved, I've moved the vernier, or I've moved the timing bout round one tooth, and it has done exactly as I explained. It's put the vernier straight back in, or the, the adjustment straight back into the middle of the vernier, uh, near as damn it. Um, I've checked this twice, so what I'm going to do now is just double check the inlet, and then this engine's done. Rock a cover on, a couple of little bits to finish it, um, and I'll give you a quick walk around what we've done after. So that's the Caterham engine, K-series all finished. <clears throat> I've just messaged Simon, my customer, to let him know. Uh, cam timing's all set, new liners, re-rung. Uh, I've tidied the piston up where it had some damage from a previous um, injury. We put new exhaust valve guides in it, gone through the seats, vac tested it, skimmed it, balanced the bottom end, um, the conrods and the pistons again to make sure that's all good. Um, yeah, and that's it. It's all done. The uh, the clutch is still loose because he's got his put his he's got to put his drive plate in there. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly tape up the uh, ports and the plug um, holes, spark plug, the inlet on the cylinder head as well needs taping up. Anything where dust can get inside the engine, the breather up there. I'm just going to go and find a new O-ring for the for the cover, for the cam cover, but that's done, that's another one done. On to the next job.